everyone, it's Kevin Raber, Luminous Landscape, downtown Indianapolis at Hotel Tango. It's a whiskey bar. We want to thank you for stopping by to be part of a new collaborative series that we're doing with Robert's Camera. And uh, with me are two esteemed guests, Jody Grover and Phil Gibson. And these guys are probably some of the most knowledgeable guys in the industry. They've been doing this for eons. They can tell you, well, how long have you been in this business? Uh, 21 years. 21 years. 0.7 eons. 0.7 eons. That's a whole new measurement of uh, the, the speed of light. <laughs> but he's been around a while. And of course, I've been around for 40 plus some odd years too. And we want to present this new series as a way of talking not only about the industry and about a lot of different things, but a candid discussion on photography as a whole. And there will be some episodes where we bring in uh, vendors and representatives from different companies and photographers. And most of the time, it'll be just the three of us talking photography, something we like to do. For our first episode today, uh, we're going to talk about the industry. Uh, what's happening in the industry here in 2018? It's the beginning of April, and it's uh, been an interesting year so far. Three months under our belts, and all sorts of uh, cool things have happened. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about where we've come and where we're going, and possibly uh, what's next on the horizon for this year. So, well, let's go back to last year. And oh, oh, just be as a refresher. Uh, we had uh, a, one new major <sighs> camera from Nikon, correct? The Nikon D850? D850. And that was Nikon's only real inter introduction last year. Yes, but a home run. A home run. Yeah. And, and, uh, uh, what about Canon? What did we see from Canon last year? Not much. Not much from Canon. Not much at all. Yeah. Uh, OK. And then we have Sony. And I think I counted at least six camera introductions. Uh, by Sony uh, yeah. last year, and a lot of them are reiterations of their previous versions. Uh, at the end of last year, they introduced the A9 towards the end of the last year, and then about four weeks ago, they released the Sony A7 III, which is a new iteration on the A7 II with all sorts of interesting and great features uh, for less than $2,000. So Sony just keeps pushing them out, and they keep improving them all the time. You want to know it's amazing, but what? he'll say it's amazing. <laughs> This old fart went mirrorless. Yeah, last exactly. night. Yeah. yeah, tell me about that. You, 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 of course, he complains about it every day, but he went. You know, he had to learn something. Uh, yeah. uh, but now you've just had a great experience with mirrorless. You were, you, you were with, you had before. Uh, I got a, for, I don't want to say this, but a full frame camera system, correct? No. Okay. No, no. I had a uh, uh, APS-C uh, Canon 7D Mark II. Great camera. And I, I, in some of our discussions, you said you wanted to shoot birds and didn't think mirrorless was there quite yet. Now tell me where you're at. I've tried several Olympuses extensively, but the new OMD EM Mark II. EM1 oh, Mark II. Yeah. EM1 Mark II. I, that's hard to say. <laughs> uh, really, really can capture the speed of a bird. Keep track. Great shot. I mean, it's... Autofocus it's frames finally, per second? It's finally there. Yeah. Right? It's so. finally there, and it's uh, and many of my friends, a lot of uh, conservation photographers around the country, are, are more and more are using them, and the results are, are it's the future. It's technology doesn't yeah. go backwards. It's here, and it yeah. just keeps getting better and better. It's yeah. interesting you say that because a lot of people are, and we'll talk about this on our next segment. But you know, they're looking at the size and the weight, and you know what to carry into the field. If you took a look, you're when you shot, you're shooting with probably the new 300 millimeter Olympus, which has the equivalent of what, 600 millimeters? 600 f/4. So in a in a lens, what approximately that size? Take my hand off. It's my forearm. Exactly. <laughs> just, it's, it's my forearm. Like, but <laughs> so, but you're you're getting a, uh, uh, and that 600 millimeter equivalent in the white glass, as we would call it, or even the big Nikon glass would be. About that size and probably ten thousand dollars. Easily. Yeah. Ten thousand. And what's the three hundred go for on the Olympus price wise, approximately? Uh, three grand or so. Three, three grand. Yeah, about yeah. three. Yeah. So it's a it's a heck of a, it's a switch. Third the price. Yeah. Yeah. Third the price, probably a fifth of the weight. The the experts talk about is depth of field and uh, you know, regarding the because it's a smaller format and so forth, but for shooting birds where yeah. you know you're against woods or sky or something and that actually helps you a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And, Oftentimes with birds, there's a distance between your subject and your background. So you're you're now convinced mirrorless is where it's at. And All I gotta do is convince my wife. 
Oh, wow. So we have one system. Yes. <laughs> That's... You're, you're working towards that, right? <laughs> In my family, we have a lot of systems, and uh, my wife just, oh, she always wants the new stuff, but. I can see she's photographing us with a Fuji. Yeah, well, I saw that. <laughs> that's, and that's a new <laughs> Fuji problem. Back to uh, where the industry is. And of course, the, what we're hearing here is that this is kind of paralleling some of the records that we've heard as far as uh, uh, the industry records, as far as the mirrorless going. And Sony shares this very openly in their last uh, uh, presentation and you know how many they're selling. So this leaves me with a question. And you know I've been toying with this. You started out saying that you're you're saying like Canon and Nikon don't want to give up sort of this legacy kind of business they have. And it reminds me of the great Kodak. yellow box. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kodak in slow motion. Yep. That's, it, that's really what it is. So now you, you read in the rumor sites and things that, you know, Canon's going to be releasing something big. And right now there's some pros with a mirrorless out there. You know, we've seen the Canon M50, MH50, was it? The one that just came out? M50. M50, which... Well, that was impressive, wasn't it? Oh. That, <laughs> was a 4K <laughs> with you know, 1.5 and then another 1.7 yeah. knocked off of it or something. Is this, yeah. Phil, I didn't tell you this. Uh, one of my friends, it, uh, obviously we have lots of friends at all the companies, you know. One of them said to me when I told him, CPS member switched. And it's for weight. They can't, they don't have a product I want. He goes... Well, have you looked at the M50? It's Kool-Aid. They drank. I mean, yeah. have you looked at the yeah. M50? Uh -huh. Well, yeah. Yeah. Have, <laughs> have you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds good when you see it on a piece of paper until you realize right. some of the, mm -hmm. the limitations of it. And of course, they had a couple iterations earlier of that. But there's a lot of words saying that you know they're working on a, a full-frame system, <laughs> and we'll, we'll come back to full-frame later. But I guess the the big question is, and probably the hardest thing for both Nikon and Canon is the lens to flange distance. Flange distance, yeah, and, that's the big question. You know, you've got so many lenses out there and to really do mirrorless, do you just want to do a mirrorless in an existing big body and defeat the whole purpose of exactly. why you go mirrorless? Right. Right. So does that mean they have to develop new lenses? And if so, how fast can they develop them? Yeah, that's... You know, can they can keep up with the innovations that Sony keeps announcing? I mean, obviously they're on a Not roll. At this rate. And, yeah. you know, I believe what we're going to see from Sony in the future, I mean, if you take... The new, like the 100 megapixel sensor that they're making, and cut it down to full frame, you come out to roughly 60 some odd megapixels. Right. What's going to keep them from putting that in an A9 body and have a 60 megapixel it's, camera? I th They've got the glass for it. I think their new A9, A92, let's call it, is going to be their biggest home run. I think so. I think they learned, a, they're going to learn a lot from the first, and it's going to be. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's an incredible camera, even though the A7 III is out now. That A9, I mean, it's still, for sports for, photography, for it's, it's phenomenal. And there's a 400 2.8 lens yeah. coming out. They've yeah. got some other longer lenses. They know what they need to do. Um, I, really... I have a lot of pros that shoot DSLR, high-end. Let's talk high-end a little bit. <clears throat> and a lot of them say that, and they've used them, all the different systems. Uh, right now, if you're a pro, you can borrow anything from Sony. How they're getting the money to spend, the marketing they're spending is amazing. Yeah. But they try it, and they most of them still think the high-end DSLRs capture more frames at high speed than than the Sony's. Oh. My experience. But that's just a year or two. Yeah, it's, that's I, a tweak. Yeah, yeah. My, my yeah experience that's a year or two, and that's what I mean. The new A9 <clears throat> is yeah. going to change that. <clears throat> my experience with the A9, and of course, I've only used it with wildlife in the Arctic and a few other places, Antarctica. Mm -hmm. uh, 20 frames a second where that buffer never seems to fill up, and I'm uh, using it with a 100 to 400 most of the time at this point, and the AF tracking just stays oh. right on it. I'm laughing because when I got my camera, I had to turn down the frames per second. <laughs> what if <laughs> it was too many frames per second? <laughs> it's a pain in the ass to edit with. It's at least down. another bottle or two of wine when it comes to editing. No, this fine bourbon. I, if I was drinking this <laughs> fine bourbon, oh, I'd be on the floor. Everyone would come in, all right, so what's your editing? <laughs> I am. <laughs> anyway, so where I think some of the future is going to go, and I'd be curious to see what you guys think about this. Um, right now, most of these digital cameras are 14-bit. Right. And while I don't know if we can see bigger sensor sizes, we can see a huge improvement in sensors if the processors take a step forward yep. and we see 16-bit. And that's the only thing keeping us back is the fact that the processors have got to be a little more powerful to handle the ability to go to 16-bit. But the amount of detail in each pixel and thus 
combined with all the pixels next to it at 16 bit are going to make, make a huge difference. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, I will argue with what I'm going to say. And there's another side to this. Okay. But the way we use the photograph in digital, as I talk to many of my customers, what you need depends on what you end with. That's exactly You're right. You're going to do a right. billboard inside of a building. Good point. But Good point. For 99% of the people, 50 megapixels at 16 bit, what are they going to do right. with it? Right. I mean, what's changed resolution? <laughs> yes, you can crop. Yeah, now you, you know, at some point, and I'm, yeah. I'm going to say I'm wrong here because I used to say in the old days, who needs more than 12 meg? Yeah. And look yeah. what we're doing with it. But there has to be a line in the sand yeah. somewhere where it begins to get to be well, it's a map like that we're not ISO using anymore. Thing, yeah, the whole the whole ISO thing's got nuts to what, you know, why? I mean, why are you going to shoot in the dark? You're going to light what you're shooting. You exactly. Know, it's There's the same, a line the where reason. the technology yeah. will eventually yeah. settle to what's usable. Good question, but... It's a question, it's not a statement, hey, absolutely. No, I mean, absolutely. It, but so, I've always, when it? I was a phase one, we'd have 25 megapixel, 45 megapixel, then, you know, 60 and 80 and 100, and probably be 150 this year. And for some reason or other, there is a group of photographers that will continually upgrade. Where are they? But it's an ever smaller group. <laughs> it might be an ever smaller group, <laughs> yeah, but for I mean, a it, company it is, like it phase, is. it's fine. But yeah. watch how quickly people start buying 60 mm -hmm. megapixel Sonys if they ever come out. And that's... Okay, speculation doesn't mean yeah. they're coming. Yeah. It's just a little mathematical no, thing. No, they we are really coming. Price difference, Wait, though. as I told <laughs> you, the they are coming. Yeah. So technology doesn't oh, yeah, stop. stop. So yeah. people are going to want sure. a higher yeah. megapixel camera. Yeah. And I think you're very correct. You know, I don't. So I make 44 by 72 inch prints sometimes in my studio, but not a lot because they take up a lot of wall space. But I always want to have that best file I can crop into. It's kind of like. You know, why shoot 4K versus 1080? You right. shoot 4K because if you got to, you can, yeah. you know, cut in a little you bit. You can and still... archive it, you can crop it. And all that. Yeah. So there's, yeah. there's, you know, some method to it. But I think you're always going to want, and I think this is what the industry is gambling on, people are going to want better lenses, you know, more megapixels, you're need more capability. Lenses. And, you know, yeah. we're, we're in a business that's changing. And let's twist this around for one second. Because one thing that's not in your camera store anymore are compact cameras. Well, there's so, a few. There's a few, but... But yeah, you're, you're so, exactly right. Fine. They're either really high-end or they serve a very specific purpose, purpose or yeah. they're not there. So they're when just, Canon yeah. and Olympus and some of these companies were really big on making these compact cameras started losing that business, they got to start to focus on other kind of things because the mobile phone uh, business has taken over. And we'll do an episode on mobile photography and things. I'm sure that we'll have a lot of fun with that one. So you got companies now like Sony and uh, all these guys that are you know, building cameras knowing that they're only going to last three or four years before somebody probably wants to get the next version of them. And, you know, somebody's always going to be leapfrogging the other person. So it comes back once again to Canon and Nikon. If, you know, are they going to go nuclear this year? You know, where do, what's the speculation? Nikon says we're going mirrorless. Canon says we're going to focus on mirrorless. Okay, Bruce, our fearless leader, and I used to bet pairs of Martinis. Oh, martinis. With blue, oh, cheese, cool. with blue cheese stuffed olives. Okay. And you bet a pair. So if you lose two, then you have to buy four, but you get two. So it's a great way to gamble. So we should gamble <laughs> on our predictions. I think we should right. gamble alcohol on the rocks <laughs> on our predictions. All right. Well, I'm all for extreme gamble. I think Canon's <laughs> going to come big. Photo Canon. Canon has to. They haven't done anything lately. I, I think mean, they, they have they've it. got to bring it. So yeah. I call it the nuclear option. Yeah. As we seem to be saying that. I mean, they're going to have to holiday. bring it and a ton of lenses. I mean, they and can't, they can't go half fast yeah. with it. They're going to have to bring it hard and it's going to have to work. I mean, that's the, and they can't do adapter, adapter won't work. Yeah. And they've so, got to quit screwing themselves on the 4K. I mean, but they, they're constantly competing with their own divisions. You know, it's, it's not a cinema camera, so it does need 4K. Well, everybody else has it. Yeah. But they're they have, have the to means. I mean, I'm not sure Nikon has the means. It's a huge amount of money. Well, it's a, get a it, line for new lenses. Well, I think mean, Canon has they're the financial selling the background. They're just fine. I mean, Canon's not selling much. You know, but it's a big it's, company. Yeah, it's true. It's they huge. can absorb but way bigger companies. If, if yeah. Canon does this, I mean, they're, they're okay. You know, they've got to come out with you know megapixels. They've got to come out with specs. They're competing now against Sony because I think Sony's more or less. They are set bleeding the bar. more customers to Sony by far than anyone from Nikon because you can take all your glass and use it on a Sony and it works. Um, you know, and a lot of people have switched, and 
And now that they've switched to Sony, what's the compelling reason to go back to Canon? I mean, I, I don't know what that is. Well, the thing too with Canon, Sony's very lucky because they own their own sensor division. And you know that gives them the advantage of knowing what's in the pipeline and camera designers are working towards what's coming and you know there's like a parallel development along the way. You know, Canon does their own sensors, and they, they, at least they have in the past. And uh, there is a lot of word with the 5DS and the... the 5DS and the SR. I mean, and the SR. SR. Yeah. Um, they don't have quite the high ISO and, and dynamic range no. capability that no, the other cameras were having. And so, you know, that also shed a little bit of doubt on the sensor division of Canon. But, you know, if Canon can do this and think about things, I mean, they, and, and jump ahead and make a back illuminated sensor, or, you know, with all the things that are going forward, well, we'll see where they are. Maybe yeah. they'll come out with the first global shutter. Who knows? They got a leapfrog in. It, it's, it's going to be an interesting year. And, and my old friend from Nikon now is doing quite a job with Sony Professional Services. <laughs> oh, well, so he's nameless. So we'll remain which nameless. is something else they need to work but on. But I'm yeah, telling you, I'm that. telling you, anyone calls me up, a pro, all my, company, my customers are mostly pros, and they go, hey, I want to try a Sony. I call up my Sony pro rep, and she goes, where and when? Yeah. No, this There's is, no question yeah. where and when. Uh, you know, sitting through the, sitting yeah. in the press meetings that I've sat in with Sony, um, you know, they're very well aware of what they need to do. And the pro side of things is getting a lot of yeah. resources right now. I wonder and, how much money there is there. Uh, I don't know. It's Sony. You know, yeah, it's, as much as it I sat with the CEO. Now, you, you might know CEO just exchanged um, this month. Uh, one CEO is stepping down and another stepping up. And I thought the one that's stepping down was, I've sat with him a few times and, um, you know, he remembers the day as a stop back and fixer and, you know, photography and his father and so forth. And, you know, I remember him saying, you know, we're in it to be number one. And, you know, that was a pretty big commitment. And, you know, now as he steps down, he says, I'm doing this not because I don't want to continue doing it and have fun, but I want to have somebody up there with new vision yeah. and, you know, new direction. Did you ever ask him about whether he would purchase Nikon? <laughs> no, but we've heard You never asked him that question? No, I didn't ask him that question. Oh, I from, that's the one question I'd have asked him. I know, but I never thought of it. We weren't whispering in my ear, but... Um, but, I mean, who would have thought five years ago that Sony would be where they're at today? I mean, it's just... It's, it's crazy. Who would have they thought 20 years ago yeah. where we would be today? Yeah. I think it's, number one, as a photographer, a great time to be a photographer. You have a lot of choices. Oh, yeah. You know, it used to be, as a reviewer, you could find a lot of faults with cameras. Buttons placed wrong, stupid things that are being done, um, not being done correctly. But, jeez, just about we're in, any... We're in the golden age, I think. I really yeah, are, because yeah, every camera's yeah. taking a good picture. Yeah. You need to f pick a camera, and we'll talk about this in our next segment based upon how you're going to use the camera and really what you need in the end. So we're going to come back and visit that oh, yeah. in, in the next chapter. My favorite quote, my brother-in-law, for as long as I've known him, the last few years says, it's so amazing to be alive in the 21st century. Just, yeah. just one thing after the last another. 18 years, just so amazing to be here in the 18th century. You can't even imagine what tomorrow The 18th is. century. 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even He's opened the bottle. He's yet. old. 2018, I meant. Yeah, 2018. <laughs> Cut that. 1820. <laughs> so, in closing, I want to first off thank Phil and Jody for being here. We talked a little bit about things. Uh, we're going to come back and have a little whiskey for celebrating our first time uh, doing this video. And we're going to try to do a couple of these a month. And uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you really like this. That way you can also hit the bell button and be notified when the next On the Rocks come out. And uh, give us some feedback. We're going to, uh, we have a lot of ideas. And we're going to take this as far as we can and uh, have a lot of fun doing it. So our next segment will be on uh, camera formats. And stop back to see that soon. And I really want to thank both of you guys for being here. Thank, thank Roberts you. for being part of this collaboration. <laughs> and uh, I hope we, we see a lot of new business for Roberts <laughs> as a result of that. Oh, we are, just do this because it's fun. And, and, it's, and it is fun. <laughs> and uh, it's what I, I, you know what? And you, you, the word fun is something I tell everybody. There's so many people on the internet these days typing things, looking at MTF charts, yeah. trying to figure things it's out. It's not fun. Now. You know, what, Go out and take a damn picture. Yep. You know, have that's some right. fun like you did, you know, shooting birds over the weekend yeah. and what you yeah. do. And, yeah. you know, because that's where it really comes out to play. 
borrow a camera, get the camera, go out and use it, make a picture with it, because you're not going to see all the MTFs and the numbers or anything like that in the photographs you make. It's all about having fun in an age where it's actually really fun to take pictures. So Kevin Raber for Luminous Landscape, Jody, Phil from Robert's Camera, thank you very much. See you on the Luminous Landscape. Luminous Landscape and Roberts. Yeah. Luminous Landscape and Roberts. Go! Oh. Yeah. That's confusing now. He does not gonna know what one to sink on. You gotta do one clap. I know we're wasting tape. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're, right. wasting, we're wasting tape. We're wasting tape. <laughs> one of the emails, I think it was from Meredith, said we're filming at 10:30. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs>